CTV's W5. Here is Rick Westhead. Welcome back. The Canadian Football League's Ottawa Red Blacks have struggled this year, finding themselves near the bottom of the league standings. But for defensive back Sherrod Baltimore, his struggles on the field pale in comparison to the hardship he's endured since childhood. As you're about to see, his life has been about constantly overcoming adversity. You're not the tallest. No. You're not the fastest. So what are the strengths that you have out there? I got one of the biggest hearts on the field. I don't know what it's like to go through adversity. Sherrod come from the tough streets of D.C. and Maryland. I just remember coming home and everything was on the front yard. I remember bags everywhere on the front, trophies. My mom sitting here crying. My grandma was in a wheelchair sitting in the front. So I used to be cool here, but just like after we got evicted, stuff just started going downhill. From a young age, Sherrod Baltimore was shaped by struggle. In a single parent home, the family's main provider was his grandmother, Sharon. When she had a stroke in 2001, the financial burden fell to Sherrod's mother, Sharice, who struggled to keep her young family afloat. It wasn't the easiest trying to maintain my family and keep all of us together. It wasn't really a good financial situation, really. My mom stopped working to take care of my grandma. The evictions happened about five or six times. You're not getting evicted, you're going to nice areas. You're going to the worst of the worst areas. Gerard bounced between roughly a dozen different homes in Prince George's County, Maryland, just outside Washington, D.C. His childhood was spent in some of the most dangerous neighborhoods in America. People get robbed every day. People shoot people, kill people every day. Sherrod would sometimes go live with his role model, his uncle Trey. In that time, I mean, just having a, a, head, a roof over his head was critical at that point. I mean, food was almost an afterthought. We had tons of violence around us, and it hit home when he got robbed. Uh, that was a bit much. That's where he was uh, robbed and pistol whipped and had his two front teeth knocked out. I'm like 12. We're walking home, so I just came on the sidewalk just like this. Walked up here, walked to a spot. Shit, that's some shit. It got crazy. Got pistol whipped. I don't know what happened. I don't got my teeth. Mama, I don't even say nothing. I just, my mom was like, oh my God. What happened to your teeth? What is going on, my baby? <laughs> Did you think he might shoot me? Yeah, 100%. I thought I got shot. I didn't even think I got pissed with it. I thought I got shot in the mouth. You know what I'm saying? Shit. Youth football coach Ray Farmer recalls seeing this happen to a number of his players. It was tough. Football was our outlet to get away from all that nonsense too, because you got two hours of not thinking about it. But then when these kids leave, they went back to that environment and they had to deal with it. As many close to Sherrod fell victim to the trappings around them, Sharice was desperate to keep her son on the right path. I did whatever I could to keep him interested, to keep him going. If they had a tournament somewhere it might be my last $40, I'd give him that $40 to go on that trip. What's it feel like to give the last $40 in your wallet to your kid to go away to a tournament? It hurts. You have to think about everything that's in your cabinets, everything that's in your refrigerator. If I give him this $40, are we going to be able to eat? I'll worry about that later. When you see something in your children, you have to allow them to go through with it. While Sherrod starred in both football and basketball at Friendly High School, his mom and siblings moved into a homeless shelter. 
Sherrod, meanwhile, moved around a lot. He didn't even know where his mom was at times, you know. I would just try to explain to him what was going on, why it was going on. It would tear him to pieces. By definition, you were homeless. Yeah, man. It's just it's a tough situation, man. It makes you strong mentally. And then when you step on that football field, there's nothing on that football field you can't do or won't do to get yourself out of that situation. His basketball coach, Rob Garner, saw that Sherrod had heart and talent. He was one of these kids that was going to make it. When you think back to the days you were at Friendly, were you happy? Yeah. I was happy and I was also always angry. Like, not angry, but just... Listen, man, when you go through something and you see so much, you don't know why you're angry. There's one thing that's guaranteed in life every year is adversity. Sherrod earned a scholarship at the University of Maine, where he was a standout defensive back for four years. No pro offers followed. A year out of playing, Sherrod created his own opportunity when Jean-Marc Edmé, an Ottawa Red Black scout, visited Maine in 2016. At that time, he was coaching. And he came up, introduced himself, and, and asked really politely, uh, when you have a chance, will you watch uh, some of my games? Thrown out, and a great play by Sherrod Baltimore to break it up. Wow, this is a guy we need to bring to a, a training camp. Sherrod's tryouts earned him a spot on the Red Blacks 2017 practice squad. He's a guy who has a good heart, you know, sometimes you just feel it, you know. I love football, but Ottawa, I don't really know much about, but I'm excited to see what's going on out here. By mid-season, he worked his way onto the main roster to play alongside Red Black's defensive back, Jonathan Rose. He plays bigger than he really is. He goes out there and outperforms the guys that are above his height and above his weight class. And he finished the season as the Red Blacks Rookie of the Year. No, sir! He test that! No! Red Blacks general manager, Marcel Desjardins, believes Sherrod is fighting for more. Even in his time here, he's had to fight to maintain his place on the roster. And the breaks the Red Black needed comes courtesy of Sherrod Baltimore. The CFL is about opportunities for a lot of guys. It is, again, a credit to him and his perseverance, not only on the field, but off the field. Tripped up down near the end zone, and Sherrod Baltimore has it. There's only respect on our name, man. Do you remember some years ago, you didn't even know where you were going to live, how you were going to eat, no clothes in your back? I said, Sherrod, you're a professional football player. Is this special to me? Sherrod's that kid. He that kid that I always wanted to have in my heart. He's that kid. I, I know this kid, and I know what he's been through. It feels great. It, it really does. I'm so, so proud of him. Some of the things that he has gone through, and I felt like I failed him. But he made it. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not the Give me that. Yeah. Going too soft. Don't do me. Sherrod's mother and his six younger brothers and sisters currently live in Section 8, government-assisted housing in D.C. I know he doesn't like us being here, but we have lived. You can't survive here, you know what I'm saying? But I'd rather have them in a safer environment, in a more stable, bigger house, bigger everything. When Sherrod returns home, the family gathers at Uncle Trace. It's good! <laughs> it's the type of home and everyday life Sherrod hopes that his football career can provide for his mother and siblings. His younger sister, Sheree, says he's always there to support the family. <laughs> when it comes to family, he keeps pushing, he keeps helping, he keeps caring. He'll close to drop everything to come down here. He's an extremely giving person. His family is being uplifted just off of his energy and his passion to be better no matter what. 
That's what makes him the guy he is. How does a kid who went through a half dozen evictions, whose family moved between shelters, who grew up in some of the most dangerous neighborhoods in America, wind up becoming a professional football player? Tough times don't last, man. Tough people do. The Red Blacks did not qualify for the playoffs this season, and Sherrod's contract with the team expires at the end of the year. But he hopes to be back on the field playing with Ottawa next season.